We're live in Tokyo with one atomweight world champion, Angela Lee. Just 24 hours away from one championship's biggest event in history, one a new era at the legendary Ryu Goku Arena this Sunday. Angela, how's it going? Tell us what tell us what we're doing today. Oh, it is going great. Um, we just wrapped up our final weight and hydration check, and now we're on the way to get some food. So I couldn't be happier. Everything good with the the weight check feeling good, ready to go for tomorrow? Everything is really great. Um, you know, I've been underweight the whole week that since I got here and that's never happened before. I was able to eat and train and I'm feeling really healthy. So I think tomorrow is gonna be a great night. And the question on everyone's mind, what are you getting for lunch today? Where are we going? Oh man, we are going to get some Ichiran ramen. I looked up the nearest one um, and we're going to Rapungi. Have you been there before? Or is this a first time ramen experience? Um, I've been to an Ichiran ramen before. I think it was in Shinjuku and it was amazing. It blew my mind. It was literally such a cool experience and best ramen I've ever had. So I've been craving it since and now get to dig in. We caught you in the fall coming out for the One Championship press conference uh, in 2018. How is the trip this time? Is it a lot better? Are you more acclimated to your surroundings? Uh, how, how is the trip this time to Tokyo? When did you arrive? Um, so I arrived in Tokyo Monday evening and uh, the first couple of days I had a little bit of jet lag but that was totally fine because I was getting plenty of rest anyways. Um, and the weather here, it's a little bit chilly. It kind of reminds me of um, you know Vancouver, Canada but it's Sakura season so we're surrounded by cherry blossoms and it's beautiful. I'm so glad we came at this time of year. I saw you getting swarmed by fans in the lobby. Uh, has that been happening all week? It seems like everyone knows you out here. Uh, you know, it's been getting more and more busy as the week has gone by. Uh, but the fans here are amazing and, you know, I've received so many gifts from, from people just in the lobby. Uh, drawings, uh, bandanas, um, like candies and snacks and a tour guide book too. So, I mean, the Japanese people here are just so... They're, they're amazing. The Japanese fans really came out for the press conference earlier this week uh, for One A New Era at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Tokyo. Uh, talk about that experience. You got to go face to face, eye to eye with Shong Jing Nan for the first time. Uh, tell us how the press conference went for you. Man, the press conference was on fire. It was, uh, it was packed to the max in that room and um, I've never seen a turnout like that before in one championship. So it's really exciting to be a part of that and um, Woo, to face off with Shong Jing Nan, that really got me pumped, you know, my, my heart was beating out of my chest and um, I felt ready to go right there, you know, but gotta wait, gotta wait one more day. Yeah, I saw things got, uh, got pretty heated with you guys, you got pretty close. Um, having sized her up now, do you feel like you're the bigger, stronger athlete or do you feel like you guys are pretty, uh, pretty on par as you're moving up in weight, straw weight division for the first time? Um, you know what, moving up in, in to the strawweight division, I've never felt like I would be, um, you know, uh, a smaller opponent compared to the other people at strawweight, especially with Shang Jing Nan. So I feel very confident. And when I sized up with her, um, you know, at the press conference, I, yeah, she was around the size that I imagined her to be, you know. So I think that his size is not going to be an issue. Tell us a little bit more about your camp uh, in preparation for this bout. Um, anything specific you worked on uh, for Shom or any different approach, any new training partners, anything at all? Um, so we picked up camp from the last time we were supposed to be scheduled to fight in November and um, it's kind of allowed us time to sharpen you know, the edges around things, tighten everything up and uh, we stuck to the same game plan but I think now it's going to just be executed a lot more smoothly. Now I know for this uh, bout in particular, you didn't really have to worry about your diet so much going in. You got to probably had a lot more energy in training. Oh, yeah. How big of a difference did you just feel this camp uh, in the lead up? You know, I was just talking with my dad and I was telling him I've never felt this way you know in a fight camp leading up to a fight I've never been able to eat on fight week um, you know I was always so drained and this entire fight camp I didn't get sick once and that's a miracle because in the past I've, I've gotten sick maybe two three multiple times and um, so I think that you know my body is much more healthy at this weight 
did you get focus a lot more on strength and conditioning also like kind of bulking up for this bout you looked ripped on stage at the press conference <laughs> thank you um not so much uh bulking up but kind of just you know uh being comfortable with where i'm at because that's naturally uh my 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 walk around weight you know it's around 125 so um you know i felt good i felt like we didn't have to change much it just allowed us a lot more time to focus on my opponent and uh the game plan that we're gonna use for this fight now it's been a while since uh, fans last saw you inside the cage. Obviously you had an injury that you had to deal with. Um, do you feel that you're gonna have any cage rest coming in after all this time off or do you feel more ready than ever? I feel more ready than ever. You know, we've had so much time to drill, spar, um, different scenarios. And I think that, you know, I, I'm feeling ready to go you know this is the most excited I've been for a fight since my pro debut in one championship so you know I'm really looking forward to this one now Angela a lot of a lot has happened in the atom weight division uh, the division in which you're champion since you've been out um, a lot of up-and-coming contenders exciting bouts exciting action uh, anyone that you have your eye on in that division who have you been impressed with uh, during your time off um, you know, since my time off, uh, I've actually been preparing for this fight. So 100% of my, my focus um, has been on Xiong Jung Nan and, and capturing this straw weight belt. So I um, actually haven't been paying too much attention to that in weight division. There's been a lot of success, not just with you, but with the entire Lee clan. Christian's obviously back in the winner's circle. Uh, Bruno just took out a Japanese legend in Kotetsu Boku. Um, would you say you get even more satisfaction out of seeing their success inside the cage? Oh man, I think, um, you know, for me, it's it's such an amazing feeling to witness their victories, you know, their victories. We, it's like a shared victory, you know, between the entire family and the team because uh, everyone is so involved in each other's fight camps and um, it's a great feeling, you know, to be cheering on cage side for my brother and for my husband and I know they feel the same. Now. I know you did a similar activity earlier this week uh, at the YouTube headquarters in Tokyo, but I wanted to just run through some some of the big bouts. Obviously, it's the most stacked card, won a new era uh, this Sunday. Um, let's run through some of the biggest bouts and get your predictions on them. Sound good? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. It'll be fun. It'll be quick and easy. Um, let's start with Yod Sinclair versus Andy Sauer. Tell us who wins and why. Oh man, these two are, are legends, you know, they're, they're really the, the highest level you can get and um, this is a tough one to call, you know, um, I've met both of them um, and of course, you know, styles make the matchup sometimes and also, you know, uh, Yodson Klai has been the more active athlete. Um, oh, it's hard to pick, I hate picking, you know. Um, I'm leaning towards uh, Yodson Clyde, but I, I don't think Andy's gonna make it easy for him, you know? But who knows? A fight is a fight. Anything can happen. Very political, Angela. I like that one. How about Eddie Alvarez versus Timofey and Nastyukin? Oh, uh, this is another tough one, you know? These guys are both very, very dangerous, you know? They're explosive, they got knockout power. Um, you know, Eddie, he's a seasoned veteran. Um, he's been in the game for a long time. And I know he's gonna be having extra motivation for this fight. Uh, Timofey, he's a dangerous fighter and he is very explosive. So he can get caught off guard, you know, anytime. Um, you know, I say the beginning rounds go to Timofey, the last few rounds go to Eddie. Split down the middle. The greatest of all time, top pound for pound mixed martial arts athlete, Demetrius Johnson, making his long way to one debut against Yuya Wakamatsu. Does Yuya have a chance? What do you think about that one? Um, you know, anyone has a chance in this game. Um, I think Yuya, this is a you know opportunity of a lifetime for him to shock the world. A lot of people are going to have the, their eyes on this fight, so I think that you know this is a chance for him to shine. Um, and DJ, being the great champion that he is, I'm sure that. Um, you know, he's got loads of experience behind him and lots of MMA knowledge and I think he, he's going to know how to finish this fight. Kevin Bellingon versus Bibiana Fernandez, the trilogy bout in the one bantamweight division. Uh, yeah, man, these, these two have been going back and forth at it. Um, we'll see. I, I think that, you know, Bibiano has made the adjustments he needed to, you know, kind of overcome what he lacked in the previous fight. I think that, you know, his team, his coach, um, they paid very attention. They've studied Kevin's game. Um, of course, Kevin, he's young, he's hungry, and he's gonna wanna keep, you know, Team Lakai on, on top. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. 
the rematch of the 2018 bout of the year, Ang Lan Song taking on Japanese warrior Ken Hasegawa. How do you see that one going? Um, these two fighters, they have made, um, you know, tremendous um, efforts outside of uh, the fight of the first fight they've had, you know, to upgrade their training. Um, they both went to different camps, um, trained really hard for this fight. The first one was just... Oh, it was crazy, you know, and, and how, how, how it went. But, um, you know, I think the second one is going to be a little different. I think both of them are going to try and go for the finish, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to go the distance. Um, I see one of them wanting to make a statement and um, ending it with a knockout. All right, last but certainly not least, the main event, Edward Foleyang taking on your Evolve MMA teammate, Shinya Aoki, in a rematch two years in the making. Well, I want to say you're picking Shinya in that one, right? I'm going with Aoki-san. You know, um, uh, Shinya, he's a good friend. And, um, you know, I know how, how serious he takes these fights. And um, especially being here in Japan, um, I think he's going to do everything to, to avenge his title. And, um, you know, as talented and as an amazing champion that Edward Folayong is, um, I think that you know, being here in Japan is going to have some extra motivation for Shinya. All right, Angela, you're off the hot seat. Enough serious stuff. Looks like we're pulling up to the restaurant now. Uh, really quickly, any plans for after Tokyo next week? Going to hang out after the bout? Um, I'm going to have a day in Tokyo, but then after that, I'm actually flying to Phuket um, for one championship retreat. So looking forward to that, guys. All right, awesome, Angela. Any final message for the fans watching at home? Um, I just want to say thank you so much for your hospitality and your welcoming. And um, I hope to put on a great show for you guys on Sunday. All right, fans watching at home, don't miss one a new era this Sunday as Angela co-main events the biggest card in martial arts history against one strawweight women's champion, Xiong Jing Nan. Remember, in many regions, you can watch the event live on the One YouTube page or on the One Super app beginning at 3.30 p.m. local time. For our fans in the U.S., Japan, and watching around the world, make sure to check your local listings. Bye, Angela. Bye, guys. Well, Angela Lee is an American-Canadian mixed martial artist who is currently competing in one championship. On May 5th, 2016, she became, at 19 years old and 9 months, the youngest person to ever win a world title in Ma by defeating Mei Yamaguchi to win the one women's atom weight title. Angela Lee married to her four mixed martial artist Bruno Pochi and they have a baby together called Ava Marie. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon in the next video. I really appreciate your time.